I used to listen to a couple of podcasters that uh, were theologians, or at least called themselves theologians. And one of the things that they used to say was culture is neutral. Baloney. <laughs> I'm Pastor Tim Holscher. You weren't expecting that, were you? Baloney. Uh, it's more than what you put on a sandwich. It's something that's no good. And we are looking at the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers. We're going to see a statement here in just a moment about the Spirit. But the reason I say culture is neutral, that that's baloney, is culture is part of this world system. And we are just starting into a study on the relationship of the believer in the world system and the, the role that the Spirit has in our life contrasted to the way, well, the way things operate within this world system. In John chapter 14 and verse 17, it says, Jesus is speaking with just the 11 disciples. He says, I'm talking about the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Notice that it says they cannot receive him. It doesn't say they won't. They cannot. It's not even possible. Why? Because it, the world, does not see him or know him. Now, obviously, this is a really good place to demonstrate. When he says world, he's not talking about the planet. He's not talking about the universe. Because the universe doesn't see or know anything. The planet doesn't see or know anything. By world, he's talking about this system. And we're going to see that it has a ruler here in a little bit. And we're going to see who that ruler is. It is a system that organizes humanity for our concerns. I believe that there are spirit beings also that are part of this system, and we'll see that in a moment. But it organizes humanity in opposition to God. Human, humanity is already opposed to God, but the world system organizes that. It creates a culture that makes that something that nobody wants anything to do with. In fact, just not that long ago, I was having a conversation with um, people that are missionaries on the other side of the world and talking about the hostile cultures that exist. In fact, I've known some missionaries for many, many years that have served in parts of the world where the people around about them are horribly, horribly hostile to biblical Christianity, or to Christianity in general, but even biblical Christianity. And they have a, a whole culture that develops this just raging hostility, which, by the way, Christian, is not the way that you ought to raise yourself or your children. You don't raise them to be raging against other religions. Nowhere in the New Testament does it ask us or encourage us to be raging and violent towards other, towards other religions. We don't have to be, we don't have to say that they're okay, but it is not our place. It's not what God wants us to do to be fighting against them. So the point here in John 14, 17 that Jesus is making is he says the Spirit the world can't receive it because the world needs to see him. And they need to know him and they can't do either one of those things. Furthermore, in John 15, Jesus says this. He says, if the world hates you. Now he's talking about the, the, the disciples, the 11 disciples in particular. You know that it has hated me before it hated you. The world hated Jesus? Yeah. Oh, Jesus is that cool dude. How could they? Yeah, they hated him. He says, they hated me. He says, if you were from the world then the world would love its own. And he doesn't even use the word agape here. He actually goes down to the word phileo. They'd even be fond of its own. But because you are not from the world, do you get that? If you're a believer in Christ, now he's saying this about the 11 disciples, but he's going to, in not very long after this, he's going to clarify that he's talking about also those people who have believed into him, into Jesus, through the word of these disciples. So he says, because you are not from the world. So if you're a believer today, you may live in this world, but you're not from this world, from God's point of view, because I chose you out of the world. He took us out of the system and changed our identity. And it says, because of this, then the world hates you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the world will hate you. The only way you can keep the world from hating you is to not be a Christian, to not live like a Christian, to not think or respond like a Christian. And I'm by saying that, what I said a little while ago remains true. You, do, you don't do that 
by yelling at them saying, quit telling those dirty jokes or quit being drunk all the time or straighten up government or whatever other things that people rage against, holding placards down with this or we want this or protect these people here. That's not what, that. you know what it is? It's that when there are people that are in need and you just genuinely love those people, expecting nothing, you don't care if anybody takes any photos and throws your picture in the paper. You're just doing it because it's an opportunity got put in front of you to help. It's when other people that are trying to pat themselves on the back for how good they are, they're the ones that do not like that. They have that kind of hatred for that system. It's just by you just doing what you're supposed to do. It's not by you having to parade what you're doing before the world. In John chapter 12, verse 31, Jesus says, Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And he doesn't just say this here. He says this three times here in John. Talks about the ruler of this world. Doesn't say a ruler of this world. Doesn't say the rulers. He says the ruler. It's a singular ruler. He's talking about Satan. In fact, we see some of this if we go over to Ephesians chapter 2. And he says, in which, that is in the trespasses and sins, you, you Ephesian believers, formerly walked. You used to walk like this. Live your life. According to the, and this isn't the word course, it's the word age. We'll come back to that because that's an important role in all of this. The age that is, has the character of this world. In other words, we're living in an age and it derives its character from this world system in which you live. But he says, according to the prince or that same word ruler we had over there in John 12, the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit. So this prince is a spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Now, who is this? Let me go over to Ephesians chapter 6. And he says that you are to put on the armor of God. We just concluded looking at this. Being power, empowered by the spirit, you put on the armor of God that you might stand against the, what? The methods of the devil. 4 verse 12. Or because our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not really ultimately against these other people. They're dupes and pawns in this. And I think even more so, it's not the people in the church. It's not these believers. You think that they're part of the problem. But in reality, he says it's against oh, rulers. Now, not a singular ruler, but rulers and powers or authorities and against world forces. In fact, if you look at this in the Greek, the first part of this world here is the word cosmos, and it's cosmokratos. It's world powers, world forces of this darkness against spiritual wickedness. Those are talking about the devil and all those spirit beings that operate under his authority they're there to organize uh, uh, humanity against God. So you need to stop and think about this. This world system, we live in this. We live among all this stuff and everything, and we haven't fully developed all what the world system is. But here you can see in these verses, it's a system organized against God. They can't receive the Spirit. They hate. They hated Jesus. They still have a hateful, hateful hatred for him. And they also hate those who are his. That is, if you're a believer, they ultimately will hate you. And it's a system that has a ruler, that ruler being the devil. He's the one that oversees all of this. And that devil is organizing this system to oppose God. Now, do you want to be a part of that? Do you want to be a friend to that? Do you want to fit in with that system? We just looked at that. Do you want to fit in to that system? I don't think you really do. If you stop and think about that as a believer in Christ, you don't want to be part of a system that is there to oppose God, to flip God off, to call him names, to mock him. You want to be those that actually are here and living in the world to give people hope. You don't, you're, not, you're not here to rail against the system. You're not here to rail against the government that's in power wherever you live in the world. You're not here to, rec, uh, to rail against the economic systems. You're not here against social, to fight against social programs and fight for other ones or whatever. Whatever things, you're not here to do that. You are here to be a testimony of Jesus Christ by how you live so that you can give an answer, a verbal answer to those people. Let's say, why are you the way you are? Why do you have that hope in you? 
And maybe they ask that antagonistically. What gives you that hope that you could think like that? Or maybe they're going, boy, I really could stand that hope because I feel very hopeless in this world. And you know, if you as a believer, as we wish you every day, have a good day in the Lord, you can be shining like that in this midst of this world system. And as you shine out there in that system, you have that privilege where people can see it and they may actually ask you a question about the hope that's in you. And you get to share and tell them who Jesus Christ is and what, he can, what he's done for you and what he can do for them by dying on a cross, being buried, rising again, and providing us the forgiveness of sins simply by believing in him. What a privilege that would be. Thank you for joining me today.